it's been almost two years since the Jeep brand has been launched. And since then, Jeep has sold around 37,000 compasses. It's been uh, quite a ride for Jeep, uh, tough market conditions right now. And just after launching their flagship Compass Trailhawk, Kevin Flynn is here with us, the Managing Director and CEO of the company. Uh, Kevin, thanks for talking to us. Um, Good to see you. Yeah, it's been, um, let's talk about, let's dive straight into the issue which is really troubling everyone and that's the state of the market. I mean, it's probably the most horrific uh, market conditions in a long, long time. Yeah, listen, I've been uh, in this industry a long time now and um, lived in a lot of markets and worked in a lot of markets where you see the ups and you see the, see the downs. And this really feels like a down in, in, in quite a big way. I mean, when we look at our segment that we directly competed, um, May over April dropped 10%. That's a huge volume drop in in uh, one month. And SUVs are supposed to be the hot segment. Yeah, I mean, that's the segment that was really forecasted to Grow. see the real growth. So, of course, our original forecasting versus where we are today is a very, very different uh, picture. I mean, overall, our performance in it is is OK. So, so where we targeted our penetration of, a, 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 say, a competitive set, we're holding our position okay, but it's nowhere near the overall volume um, that we expected that segment to perform in. So we're really, we, I'm sure everybody else is, but we can see it and we can feel it. But for me, it's, it, it, I would almost say automotive is in a bit of recession right now. It's as strong as that. And then when you look beyond that, you know, there, there there's just doesn't seem to be the confidence to purchase right now. There seems to be a lot of reasons to delay as opposed to a lot of reasons to own. What, what do you think are the reasons? What could you sum up as the real reasons for this? And, you know, is there light at the end of the tunnel? Or are we oh, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Or is this going to be, uh, a, you know, a kind no, of, no, let's no, say, I, I a downturn for a long no, time? I, I think, I don't think there's, there's always light at the end of the tunnel because actually everybody has to react. You know, it only becomes a never-ending uh, darkness based on no action. So one will expect certain uh, uh, actions to happen to, you know, uh, get that confidence back. So, no, I think it will come back. I mean, obviously... What do you think are the factors then really, uh, you know, which have led to such a serious... Well, I don't think say, it's a lack of, 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 uh, of cash in terms of people have got cash. It's just actually the motivation to physically there's go no real motivation to buy no, right there's, now. there's there's more been more a bit of a, a search in some respects for the reasons to hold off because ironically the 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 level of inquiry isn't as low as the the market performance so there's still activity it's just the fact that not those, translating into you know, a sale. it's not the the, the 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 discussions are becoming a little bit more uh, uh, elongated let's say right and you know just coming to uh, Jeep brand and specifically yeah. FCA right now uh, you launched the compass great response you even had fiat right now but two years on uh, Company is looking quite honestly like just a one product company, which is going to be like this for, for a while. First, I like your comments on Fiat, you know, quite clearly. Uh, there seems, to, it, it's pretty obvious that there seems to be, let's say, a discontinuation of the products. It's not going to be a six. So just your thoughts on, you know, what are, what can we expect from the Fiat brand in yeah. the future? Okay, so let's, let's, let's try and cover those in two points. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Fiat first, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, 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 products on Jeep. Products on Jeep. So, I mean, obviously, FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, it's very much part of our DNA. It's what our parentage is. Um, but in some respects, when you look at this marketplace, you've also got to make sure that you've got a commercially sound business. I mean, otherwise, you've, you've got to ask the, 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 the purpose. And undoubtedly, with the uh, forecast... Uh, that has looked upon where the growth is going to be and um, SUVs clearly are a big part of that. And when we look at our portfolio as a, uh, as a company of FCA, you know, we've got a number of fantastic brands within it. It's quite logical in some respects that if you're seeing a growth and a uh, solidity in SUV for the long run, that we would decide to put our Jeep brand right in the middle of that. I mean, we are the global... Uh, right. leader in manufacturing of SUVs. 
Um, it is a fantastic 70 plus year old brand. So there's a lot that it can work. And also it puts us in a market segment which isn't as uh, critically competitive as where we were with Fiat. So that's, a, that's a, 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 I think, a very sound commercial yeah. decision. So, so you're not, not saying it, but reading between the lines, uh, let's put it this way, 2020, when you have to have BS6 engines and uh, Fiat doesn't have BS engines, we, there will be no BS6 so, engines for the Fiat range. Yeah, so, so effectively, what, what, what we're looking at is the fact that the current models, you know, let's be honest, they were quite late in life cycle. And actually, the uh, demand to physically then engineer those vehicles or engines to be actually run on, on BS6 wheel was going to take significant investment. Right. And actually, the, the business model just doesn't, doesn't, right. doesn't work. So the current range of, of vehicles, clearly BS6 will uh, have its day and right. uh, will uh, uh, mean that we can't uh, continue retailing uh, those vehicles. Um, but it doesn't mean the end of Fiat. Fiat remains with us. It's still, as I say, very much part of what we are. In fact, ironically, we've just invested uh, heavily in uh, a far bigger warehouse. Um, we are really investing in part stock. Uh, we have made sure that the Fiat brand is fully taken care of within the introduction of the Mopub. Uh, right. customer service brand that we bought in from North America. Um, so in terms of spare parts for a while? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We, we are more than sorted, more than sorted. In fact, we're investing heavily in it. So w the best way to put it is in the, its current guys, um, clearly BS6 is going to have its day. Our focus currently is definitely on on Jeep because right. we think it's the right thing for India now. Right. And we'll see how this uh, can, change, can change in time. You've still got our dealerships with the logos. We're right. still fully dedicated to looking after all our clientele. And, 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 and let's see. Without any shadow of a doubt, our focus is on, is on the Jeep brand. And I think that's a great decision. So let me just pick up yeah. on that. So, uh, you know, focus on the Jeep brand. But, but Kevin, uh, your sales have dropped considerably on Compass. Uh, FCA is now, in effect, a one-product company. Okay, you've got a lot of variants, which is Compass. It's not a comfortable position to be in, I'm sure, especially given the volumes you had, let's say, even a year ago or even two years back. Those volumes have come down for whatever reasons, market conditions, competition, that sort of thing. I mean, is that a bit of a worry? And can what can we expect from Jeep? Because you do need more product right now. Okay, well, you read a lot into that, and there's some of the things I just want to correct as well. I mean, first of all, when we plot out where we want to be from a, a, a segment share perspective, we're about where we need to be. Yeah, you get some volatility on a month-on-month -month basis, but we're about where we plan to be. And, and we have got uh, a number of actions that we're taking on Compass with different derivatives and so forth that make us even more relevant to, to, to the segment. But we did not anticipate the segment decline that has happened. And it will come back. So, so yeah, you're going to see a drop. Whenever you launch, and, and in India you can do it on probably every vehicle, you get this rise, you know, real, real heavy, heavily demand, and then it settles into a, into a pace. And we're not far off that, uh, off, off that settled pace. So, yeah, there's a lot of activity going on around us. Interesting to see that the segment actually hasn't grown despite new entrants. Right. But yet we're still holding, of that segment, we're still holding... Our, our segment share as planned. So you say it must be uncomfortable. Actually, no, it's not uncomfortable. What I need to see is actually some revival coming back into the marketplace that lifts the industry and lifts the demand and gets people back into the mode of, of buying motor vehicles. And I think we, we, will, we will come back quite nicely. So we're, we're okay. Um, the key thing also from a Jeep point of view and with this project point of view is that we're an exporter as well. And um, the whole point of the Compass project was to prove what we could do in India. We've done that. And as a result of that proof, we make a brilliant car from a point of view of quality. I mean, I, you know, I'm biased, but I think it's it, when you feel it, touch it, look at it, look at the panel gaps, feel the way it rides, look at the quality of the components. There's been no spec cut for India. So what we've got is a globally... Uh, uh, designed and engineered motor car and it's built to those exacting standards here in India and exported. 
Ch uh, exported to uh, uh, to Japan, to Australia, to the UK, South Africa, and so forth. So some of the very developed and discerning markets, and we meet that brief. So we've shown, both from a product quality point of view, from a durability point of view, that India can make, for Jeep, a brilliant motor car. And as a result of that, and in fact announced, uh, I think it was May last year, um, at the investors conference, was the fact that we're now looking at two more vehicles effectively for the uh, Indian market. So uh, one is a um, BSUV. The smaller so, one. Yeah, yeah, smaller one, so below compass. And then logically also the other commitment that was made there was uh, a on, DSUV. On, on, on a DSUV a three row uh, uh, product. Now. Both those are progressing very, very well. I think the, the proof yeah, there's period... There's a bit of a delay on the BSUV, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I think there's always expectation that, 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 that it's going to come. And there is a process to go through. Right. You know, there, every project needs to be uh, viable and is going to uh, um, you know, reward both our network and, in fact, our, uh, uh, our, our parent, the company, for, from a point of view, have been a good, sound investment. Now, we're through... Uh, uh, some of that process by proving what can be done w with Compass. So everybody has a certain number of expectations right. on timings and what can work and what but, can't work. But just to clarify, the DSUV will come first from, from what I understand. Uh, I th what, what, I, what I'll say at this point is the fact that um, we, we are working on, on both projects. I am very pleased with the progress that we are now making. And I'm sure we're going to be in a, in a very short period of time in a position to be crystal clear about our intentions and how we're going to add. But our, our objective is to make sure that we've got a, a showroom of vehicles. I mean, obviously, we're bringing in a uh, new generation Wrangler. And that's literally uh, arriving as we speak. So we've, uh, uh, you know, we'll be having that in uh, uh, availability as well. That's going to add a certain level of panache and, uh, and appeal. I wanted to ask you on the cost impact. Uh, obviously, the price of the trailer is not official, but one would imagine uh, it is going to be expensive from a technology point of view. BS6 does add cost. Yes, it does. But, you know, typically when you engineer the engine, I would imagine this has been uh, engineered or developed for BS6, B and beyond, which means even the 2023 regulation. Now, typically, are all those R&D costs front-loaded into the price right now or how does it, uh, how does it work? Because that would really shoot the price up of uh, yeah, I mean, the technology. Because, because the, the, the engine itself was already designed to be ready to take the various uh, classifications of uh, BS6, that element is taken care of. So it's actually the componentry and the system that you then put on. Right, the uh, hardware the, cost. The hardware cost is where, um, the, is, cost is is. Where the cost is, is going to come in. So some of that has been already taken care of in the ori original development of the car. But the the bulk is 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 the hardware. It's 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 got considerable number amount of hardware that is going to be added to the vehicle, to meet these uh, very stringent conditions. Uh, you know, it's an engineering challenge. We've met it right. and and we've got it. So the regulation set. We're gonna uh, we're we're there now. Right. So it, yeah, it, but it will add cost. There's no doubt about it. It's going to add cost. Kevin, I want to talk a little bit on, on policies and some of the regulations. One regulation which uh, is interesting, not going to add a lot of volumes, is the fact that you can now import homologation-free up to 2,500 yeah. uh, units per manufacturer. Do you see any value in that? Uh, some of your brands, maybe Alfa Romeo or really high-end Fiats, uh, uh, or, you know, I mean, is, is, there, is that something you're looking at, or do you really see no benefit because, uh, frankly, uh, it, the... the it's not this, the customs duty are just as high still. Yeah, I mean, look, um, CBU is is a challenge, and and so therefore, uh, I think what it does is gives you an opportunity to bring in some halo products um, that would have you know a certain appeal at a certain volume, but it it doesn't really take away any of the uh, uh, costs as such because. Effectively, any vehicle that gets, even previously, that got landed at uh, $40,000 effectively didn't have to be homologated anyway. So, it's, it's, so actually, the appeal is for vehicles well below, below that, that right. uh, uh, level. But again, it doesn't change the import duties structure. Uh, structure. So it's not suddenly going to make uh, CBU vehicles uh, cheaper. It just means that you can probably bring some halo stuff and, 
uh, have a bit of Would fun. Would that be something without... you're looking at? Or? Look, it's, 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 we've got, it's now there. That regulation is there and we have a suite of, uh, of products available. So again, I think it's one of those things we can look at. It's not a priority right now. I think the priority right now is, is what you alluded to, which is actually building the showroom for, um, Future uh, for, Jeep the, Jeep, for the Jeep brand, maximizing um, Compass and the new derivatives that we're bringing for that, and making sure that we really uh, continue to uh, keep this really premium position that the customers are enjoying and, and, and keep the momentum. Right. Well, tough market conditions, no doubt, but uh, good to know that you think there's eventually going to be light uh, yeah, at the will. end of the tunnel. There will. And wish you all the best. Thanks so much.